say good morning. All right, let's go. Come on, let's go downstairs. Let's go eat. Good morning, Abiding Fam. How are you? I hope that you are well. Today we are doing something a little bit different, but it's something I hope to do more of in the new year. I really want to do some more lifestyle-based videos, uh, more Christian-based videos, and so if that is something that you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments. Give me a comment of what kind of videos you'd like to see me create in 2020, and then of course give this video a thumbs up so I know that this is the kind of content you would like to see more of. So I have a couple of goals for this video. The first is to show you a little bit of what a morning looks like for me at this time of year. I love this time of year in the morning because I love going around the house and turning all of my Christmas lights on in the morning. Now, right now the sun is shining because it's a little bit later in the morning, so the lights don't have quite the same effect as they normally do. But typically my mornings during the work week start at around 6 a.m., 6.15. I get out of bed, I make the bed as you guys saw me do, and then I come downstairs and I turn on all of my Christmas lights. It's the first thing I do just to kind of wake up and greet the morning. I usually then take Janie outside so that she can go to the bathroom, and then I come back in and I make my coffee or tea before I sit down to do my quiet time, which is my second goal of this video. I wanna share with you guys a little bit of what my quiet time looks like. At this time of year, it's a little bit different because I'm doing an Advent devotional. So I wanna talk a little bit about what that looks like and maybe do a little bit of an Advent study with you. <laughs> Decorating for Christmas and just filling my home with the festivity and spirit of this time of year is so much fun for me and it just brings such a warmth and joy to my home and I love that aspect of the Christmas season. So I hope that you enjoyed getting to see what some of my decor looks like. We're just renting an apartment right now and so there are things I don't like about it like the paneling on the walls but you kind of just have to roll with it and I feel like we've really made it home for the time being. So. I'm really pleased with how it looks right now during the holidays. I personally love those kinds of home decor montages, and so I hope that you enjoyed it and that it gave you some inspiration, and hopefully it just lifted your spirits and got you excited about the great Christmas season. So as I said, it is much brighter out than it normally is when I get up. I usually get up before the sun does so that I have time for my quiet time because I typically have to go to work. I have an eight to five job and so I really have to prioritize making this personal time, quiet time for myself in the mornings. And I have to tell you guys, it is so worth it. I am definitely somebody who struggles to wake up, but I'm a morning person once I am up. So let's head into the kitchen and make a warm cup of tea or coffee. And then we'll come back here into the living room. I typically sit over there on the couch and snuggle in to study the real reason for the season.
Alright fam, so I just finished my quiet time and I wanted to share with you some takeaways, but first I wanted to just walk you a little bit through my process that you just saw. So I always have my stack for my devotional and my quiet time in the morning sitting on my coffee table. So what I have is my illuminated Bible. So this is what I do all of my Bible study in. It's a new practice for me, so I don't have a ton done yet. The only book that I've gone through in here is Nehemiah. So that book is very marked up and I can walk you guys through that if that's something you would be interested in. Talking about my note taking process and how I study the Bible and I could also do a morning routine that focuses on studying the Bible. During the Advent season that is my focus so I'm doing my Advent devotional as my quiet time but during the rest of the year, typically what I'm doing is Bible study where I'm focusing on a specific book and reading a chapter or a specific section for that morning. So if you want to see what that process looks like, let me know. But I keep my illuminated Bible with me nonetheless because a lot of times scriptures will come up in my study that I want to look at the context of by looking at the scripture around it and where it is in the Bible. So I keep that with me. The other thing I keep is my growth book. So this is my pride and joy now. I have a video here on my channel where I walk you through what the growth book is and all of the sections before I started using it so that you can see what it looks like blank. And I've only recently started using it so I have my Nehemiah Bible study in here and then I also have been doing all of my Advent study in here as well. So I have my sermon notes from the Advent series. So right now we're going through this series called Christ of the Carols at Church. And then the main part of my morning devotional time during the Advent season is my Advent devotional where I will be 
reading the advent book that I'm reading, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then I am taking just a few notes on that day's reading. So what I've been doing is I just am numbering them and then writing the title for that day's devotional. And then I go ahead and just take a few notes. Sometimes those notes are from my own thoughts regarding the devotional and what it made me think of. Sometimes it's a favorite line from the devotional where I'll write down the quote that I think best captured what that devotional was about that day. So it just kind of varies, but that is my process where I'll just take some notes. And then afterwards, you saw that I take some time to pray. And a lot of times what I do is I'll pray the prayer that is in the devotional book if it has one. Sometimes they have reflections or things to think about and not necessarily a prayer, but today there was a prayer, so I prayed that. And then I go to my prayer list in the back of my growth book and I kind of just reflect and go through any prayers that are still unanswered and still ones that I'm praying and asking God for in my life. So I'll just pray over these that I have written down and then I'll write any new ones if I have any to add to my current list of prayers and a lot of times too I'll just speak my prayers aloud as well. So that is what that looks like and as I said what I've been doing during the Advent season is going through this book. It is called The Glory Has Come. It's an Advent devotional that was compiled by Larry Sparks. And so basically what it is, is a lot of different Christian leaders have written these devotionals within here. And there's one for every single day of the Advent season. So there's 25 altogether for you to read from December 1st through the 25th. And so I've just been really enjoying sitting down and reading this every day. Part of what I like about this devotional is, one, is that it's all different authors, so you're getting a lot of different perspectives and ways of looking at the same scriptures because a lot of times the scriptures that devotionals focus on for the Advent season are like the basic Luke scriptures about, you know, baby Jesus in the manger. And so it's nice to get different perspectives on that same scripture. And so I've really been enjoying that aspect of it. And I like that it's a little bit longer. I feel like some Advent devotionals are too basic, where it's literally a paragraph this long, and then, you know, maybe read the scripture and then that's it. And I like that this is more in depth and each devotional is at least a few pages long so that it's more of a in-depth reading. So if for next year you are looking for an Advent devotional, I definitely recommend this one, The Glory Has Come. I honestly only picked this one up because it was the only Advent devotional available at Barnes & Noble, which was very odd to me, but alas, it was the only book that they had that was an Advent devotional. So I got it without any real expectations, but I've really been enjoying it. So that's what I've been going through this year. And so before I close out this video, I did want to share with you some of my takeaways from today's study. And so today's reading was called Blessed Are Those Who Are Not Offended by His Coming by Larry Sparks. So this reading today really focused on the idea that Christmas, if you think about it, is actually pretty offensive. And I really liked the way that Sparks explained this. He said, Offense is not always an expression of anger or bitterness. Sometimes we experience offense when everything we thought to be the way it is, is confronted and challenged. And so what he's talking about here is the fact that nobody expected baby Jesus to be born in a manger. The king of kings is laid in a feeding trough, surrounded by animals. It is the last place that anybody would expect the God of the universe to be. And yet that's where he ends up. And so the fact is that God never really shows up where we expect him to. And really there are times all throughout the Bible where people are basically saying, are you really the Messiah or should we be looking somewhere else? Because so much of what Jesus does is not something that we would expect the King of Kings to do based on our understanding of who a God should be. And so when I think about the fact that there was no place at the inn for Mary and Joseph, how Jesus had to be born in a really 
dirty environment and laid in a manger, put into a feeding trough as his crib, it sounds really offensive. And it makes me wonder if I had been a person waiting for his coming, believing that a savior was going to be born to us in that time, would I have believed if the angels showed up to me, a shepherd on the hillside, and said that Jesus, our savior, has been born and he's waiting in a manger? Would I go? Would I believe that that was true? Or would I kind of laugh it off and say, no, there's no way that that's how God would choose to move. But when you think about it, you have to put it into the context that this was always the plan. This was in the prophecies long before it ever happened. And God always intended it to be this way. And I think one of the reasons God intended for Jesus' birth to happen exactly as it did is because he knew that it would offend many. And because only those who were humble enough to be open to all of the possibilities and to not be surprised by God and to let him move however he would, only they would be able to have that glory of knowing Jesus. And that's still true during Jesus' life when he once again does many, many surprising things that nobody would really expect that would be really offensive to many of the religious leaders. And I really think that that story and that beginning for Jesus is God's way of helping us to see in his word that God will surprise us. He's not going to do things according to what we would expect. And so I need to remember that and apply it to my life today. When I see things and experience things, I need to realize that God isn't going to do things according to my will and my understanding of the way things should work. In fact, a lot of what he does do is probably going to offend me in many ways. And so the real question is, do I have the humility of heart to be open to that and to be welcoming the surprises of God? And I really like the way that Larry Sparks kind of puts this in the devotional. He says, May our hearts be like the manger that warmly received the Savior of the world upon his first advent. It didn't make sense. If we allowed it, all of the details of the incarnation would offend our minds because his movement was so contrary to how many thought he should come. And although the crowd was sparse at the manger, there was a remnant eager and ready to receive the Messiah. May we be eager and ready, likewise, to receive Jesus today as he moves on earth through the wind of his spirit. I love the way that he puts that. And so I've just been praying this morning that I would be eager and ready, that I wouldn't doubt or take offense to the circumstances of my life and that I would see God moving in it and know that there is a greater purpose to it all. So guys, that is what I took away from today's reading. I encourage you to read Luke chapter 2 and reflect on the Christmas story as well. This is the true reason for the season. And it's so good to put that in our hearts and remind ourselves of it at the beginning of the day. So I hope that this video encouraged you and that you enjoyed this peek into what my morning looks like during the Advent season. And I hope that you enjoyed taking this time together to reflect on the Advent season and talk a little bit about this particular devotional reading and some of the reflections that I had on it. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe and join the Abiding Fam and hit that like button so that I know these are the types of videos you would like to see in the future. I hope that this video also inspired you to take some quiet time to be with your Lord and Savior today and to really reflect on the true meaning of Christmas. Because the closer we draw to Him, the closer we draw to a life full of abiding joy, hope, and love.